Welcome to the International School of Tailoring. My name is Reza and this is going to be your 24th lesson of our How to Make a Bespoke Jacket series. In the previous lesson, we canvassed our traditional model. In this lesson, we are going to reinforce the brake line of our jacket with a tape often referred to as the bridle. You see, the brake line of our jacket runs diagonally across the warp and the weft, which makes it somewhat fall on the bias of our material, which is the flexible part. Now, to prevent our jacket from stretching on the brake line and falling down and kind of like swinging sideways, we reinforce this area with the bridle. Before we get to do that, however, there are a few things that we have to prepare. So, this is what we're going to do. First, we're going to mark the brake line on the fabric and the canvas side. Then we're going to trim back our horsehair and our domet inlay. And last but not least, we're going to cut our bridle and base it on the brake line. You ready? Let's go. Okay, so before we go ahead and mark the brake line and apply the bridle, we have to make sure that our forepart is pressed. Maybe you have put it somewhere and now you're getting back to it. Never work on a forepart that is kind of like crumpled up. Always press it the way you should. Before I start pressing the forepart, let me just show you this. So this is our brake line. And that's our weft and that's our warp. You can see that the brake line is running diagonally through the warp and weft. And if we pull this area, it's very flexible. Obviously, you already know this, compared to the other angles where no flexibility is present, the brake line is very flexible. If this area stretches out, the entire jacket swings away and droops down, which is a very messy look. So, let me just press this and then we'll start. So, now that the forepart is pressed, it's time to mark the brake line. This is what you have to do. Simulate gravity. Do not flatten. Just simulate gravity and let that tiny bubble that we have for the chest be there as it is. Take your L square and if your L square is inch and a quarters wide, position one side of it against the neck point. The other side of it will be an inch and a quarter away. That's about three centimeters. And then match and align that with your first button, which is going to be right here. If it's not clear where your first button is, simply grab your chalk, mark your lapel into the front edge and mark your button across it. And that is going to be where your brake line should go to. If I align this side of my ruler with the neck point, inch and a quarter over, all the way down is going to be where my brake line is. If you don't have an L square and you're using a smaller ruler, simply from your neck point measure inch and a quarter or three centimeters mark that point and then connect that point all the way to your first button it may be that your brake line is slightly moving out and your mark stitches are not matching anymore i do not recommend you bring anything back if you do so you are working against the nature of your weave at this moment, after all the manipulations that we have done. And what will happen is if you simulate gravity, everything moves back, okay? So just allow the fabric to rest as it is now after the canvassing that we have done. Let's mark. And that's the brake line. Now, I recommend you don't press too hard with your chalk. I'm doing it so that you can see where the brake line is, but just keep it light. Before you take your ruler off, this is what I want you to do. You can take your chalk. In this case, I'm using my graphite so that, again, you can see what I'm doing. As you're holding your hands firmly on your ruler, flip over the lapel, okay? You can even, if you want, put a weight on your ruler so that it doesn't move, and then mark with your chalk or your pencil or your graphite against the edge of your ruler. That will mark the brake line on the other side, which is your canvas side. Then I want you to lift up the horsehair and the domet and brush it firmly against the ruler. Make a few marks there. You don't have to make one line. That's in a moment. Do that all the way to the top. And then you can remove your weight and your ruler. Grab your block. Flip your forepart over with the block on the side. Take your ruler again. 
align it with those markings and mark your brake line. Now at this stage, you should ignore all the previous markings that you have done. So this was the initial marking, which is not relevant anymore. If you are wondering, hey, but isn't that inaccurate and isn't that incorrect? No, because what happens is when we are working with our materials, the canvas shrinks in one way, the fabric shrinks in another way. When we are pinning these darts together and the front edges, everything slightly moves. That's okay. We have allowed for those tolerances. What matters are the final markings, not the ones in between. For example, what you can see here is that the inlay we added on our brake line is not even anymore. That is almost unavoidable. No matter how accurate you work, this will happen, okay? We are working with materials that do not behave like metal and wood. What I want you to do now is to cut only your horsehair and your domet on that brake line mark. Be very, very, very careful that you don't cut your lapel. If that happens, you're going to have a tough time. Trust me. Be paranoid and triple check. Cut the horsehair and the domet, not the canvas, the horsehair. That's it. Now, the next thing that you have to do is to fold over the domet. You can, if you want, just very gently tap with your iron over it so that it stays there. And then I want you to trim the horsehair back a quarter of an inch, that's six millimeters, okay? There are two reasons for cutting back the horsehair. Reason number one is to prevent the horsehair from poking through the chest of the wearer. Therefore, it has to be covered by the domet. The second reason is that we have to reduce the bulk in the brake line area to allow the brake line to fold along our marked line. That's it. You can fold back your domet and press it flat Use moisture if you have to, and that's it. Your domet edge is going to represent your brake line. Now it's time to cut the bridle. So move your forepart and your block away and grab your silicia. Now, if you're working with our foundation bundle, you will have this silicia included in your bundle. If, however, you're working with your own materials, try to find a densely woven, thin cotton material with as little give as possible. It should not be flexible. So if you look at the cross grain here, it's quite flexible. But if you look at the selvage side, it's not flexible at all, okay? And that's the side that we're going to use. So open up the material with the selvage in front of you. Then what I want you to do is to take a pin, measure from the edge of your selvage, where these fluffy lines are, or whatever you have in front of you, one inch over, that's two and a half centimeters, like so. Now we want to cut perfectly along the straight grain. So how do we find the straight grain? It's very easy. Put your pin in there and remove one of the length grains. When you do that and you get one of those grains, one of the yarns, just simply move the yarn over like so. It will break very easily, but you have to be gentle and move it across and gather all the way to the end, like so, and you will notice a thin line right along the edge of your fabric. Cut that on the single and do the same with the other side. Do not cut them on the double, you won't be accurate. That's one. If for whatever reason your line fades into nothing and you can't see it anymore, just redo that step right from where your line begins to fade. And that's it. Remove your silicia. And now what I want you to do is to run your iron over it without any steam, just a dry iron. Give it some heat and then spray some water on top of it. That will shrink your silicia. It's important that you do this. When you're pressing, don't leave the iron on. It may stick to your iron. Just simply tap it gently and don't go like over it like that because that may stretch it as well. We are not supposed to stretch the bridle. Once it's dry, we're ready to use it. Now, you can also use lining for your bridle or any other material that is not flexible. Sometimes what tailors use 
is a narrower tape. This is of course easy to use because they can just cut the length, chop it up and apply it on the brake line. If you are working with our foundation bundle, you will have this tape in there. Do not use it for your bridle. This is for taping our front edges and the bottoms of our jacket, which is completely something else. So keep this someplace safe, don't lose it, and above all, don't use it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring back our forepart with the block behind it, like so. Take one of our bridles and align the brake line with the center of our bridle. Now what's gonna happen is that here you may have a step, depending on what kind of material you're using. I definitely feel a tiny step, which on some fine fabrics may show an imprint. Now that doesn't mean that you have to jump straight onto lining because that's the thinnest. What you simply can do is to take some of your length grains out, which basically means fraying the edge of your bridle. And because you have perfectly cut on the straight grain, you should easily be able to do that like so. And when you do that, you have a softer edge. Okay. Now, of course, this is very long. We don't need it to be that long. So align the top edge with the edge of your shoulder and cut the brake line about an inch below your button, like so. Straighten your brake line area, make sure it's completely flat, and then align the brake line with the center of your bridle. Your bridle should be aligned with the edge of your shoulder inlay, thread your needle, make a knot, and now I want you to start basting right where you can see the basting of your canvassing that starts behind the brake line. So that is right at the top. Do not go any higher. So align with the edge of your shoulder, but do not start from there. Start from where your basting on the canvassing begins. Back tack with a big bite, go through all the layers. And the next basting is going to be on the other edge, slightly in front of the previous one. Keep your bastings loose. If you pull tight, you're gonna draw everything together. We do not want that. Align the brake line with the center of your bridle and continue all the way downwards. Now, before you fasten off, you may notice, depending on the shape of your lapel, that you have a concave edge right around your button. This area is later, in the next step, going to be folded over and has to align with the mark stitches above your button and below. If you have a lot of inlay, this area will be tight, okay? A concave edge folding back on itself must be free of tension to follow that same concave fold on the edge. I have covered this extensively in lesson number 18 called the edge to fold transfer. Check it out if this is confusing you. So what we want to do is to stretch this area to allow the edge to fold over whilst maintaining a concave line along the fold. Before you finish off your bridle, give that area a stretch if you have a concave edge there. If not, you can just continue and finish off your bridle. It's gonna look like this. It is now a lot easier for this to fold back and lay flat, okay? And I want you to carefully bridle in that area because once the bridle is on, it will be more difficult to stretch it out. You can even lay it completely flat by moving everything over. And that's it, back tack twice, and that is your bridle. We are going to finish off this area once we have attached the collar. Now, this is a very basic method of reinforcing the brake line. When we get to the Pagoda model, which is a more advanced model, we are going to slightly pull the bridle over the brake line, not to create chest, but to slightly gather the brake line to make the folded brake line edge curve towards the chest for a closer fit. Let's do the other side. And that is our bridles applied and done. From here onwards, we are going to begin to attach the back to the front and the shoulders and the collar and all of that. And our jacket is going to start to look three-dimensional and will be wearable. So 
The next few lessons are going to be extremely exciting because you're going to see this jacket coming alive. Thank you.